And we're back. All right. So I mentioned before that this rather giant candle is called the Paschal Candle, right? The Paschal Candle. Sometimes it's also referred to as the Easter Candle, okay? Um, if you are in third through fifth grade in Formed One, you may have downloaded already, I hope, a venture Flom Gospel Weekly that looks like this, right? The Gospel Weekly for two weeks. This weekly because during the holidays, Flom sort of assumes we're not going to have class every week, that we're going to take a week off for the holiday. They'll often combine two weeks. So the Flom Gospel Weekly for this lesson is about both April 12th and April 19th. And you can see on this venture that there's a big picture that looks just like this. That is the Paschal Candle. And there's a little prayer service on here that very much quotes the same kind of prayer service that I want to talk to you about with this candle and why this candle is very special and what this candle is used for throughout the year and in our most holy special celebration. I mentioned before that it is Easter. Happy Easter, everybody. Easter is our highest, holiest day, all right? Some people might think that Christmas is the most important holiday because it's the one that gets the most hoopla, especially in the secular culture. But honestly, Christmas comes a close second to Easter. Easter is our highest, holiest day. Why? Because it is the day that Christ rose from the dead. The tomb was empty. Death has no more power over us. Jesus' obedience unto death on the cross led to our salvation, that he took on our sin and saved us from it. This candle is new every year. You'll notice that on the candle it says 2020, 2020. It has the year. Every year, the Paschal candle, we get a new one that has that year on it. When do we get that candle? When do we get the New Year's candle, when, the, when the, the year changes? It's on the first celebration of Easter. And if you think about that, the first celebration of Easter is on Holy Saturday. Why? Because if you remember our Sabbath celebration starts at sundown or the late afternoon of Saturday and then goes for 24 hours until late evening on Sunday. It's technically it's sundown to sundown is the the ancient tradition, right? In uh, with our Jewish brothers and sisters out there who still celebrate the Sabbath, theirs is from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday, which is why they have Sabbath services on Friday evening and they go to temple on Saturday instead of on Sunday. But when Jesus rose from the dead on Sunday, our Sabbath became Sunday. But we begin celebrating that Sunday on Saturday evening. So on the evening of Holy Saturday, the night before Easter Sunday, that vigil mass, just like we have a vigil mass here at St. Andrews every Saturday at 4 p.m., that Saturday vigil mass at 4 p.m. has the same readings and is the mass for Sunday. That's why coming on Saturday afternoon counts for your Sunday obligation for the fact that Jesus calls us to come to church every Sunday, right? Now, on Holy Saturday, the Saturday of Easter, the same thing applies. That night, we begin to celebrate Easter, and the first celebration is called the Great Easter Vigil. And the Great Easter Vigil, if you have never been to it, I beg you, please go. Hopefully next year we'll be able to have one with the public present instead of watching it live on, uh, you know, on the internet or on t television. But the Great Easter Vigil is the most amazing liturgy. It is the most amazing liturgy. It's long. It usually lasts, you know, can last two hours or more, but there's a reason for that because we celebrate in such a special way all that is important to our faith and some of which is most important to our faith. It's on the Great Easter Vigil when we make new Catholics who are adults anyway. Adults who need to be baptized and brought into the church, they get all of their sacraments of initiation at the Easter Vigil. And that brings me to this guy right here, all right? The Paschal Candle 
is an important part of the very beginning of the Easter Vigil. The Easter Vigil begins with what's called the service of light. And the service of light begins this way. By canon law, the Easter Vigil cannot begin until after sundown. Now, because we live in Florida and we don't like people to have to be out of the house uh, at all hours very, very late, we make our Easter Vigil as early as possible, which is why we look at the almanac and determine when sundown is, and we have Easter Vigils at times like 8, 10 p.m. That's when we'll start at 8, 10 because the sun went down at 8.07, for instance, all right? So once the sun goes down and it is dark, that's important, what happens is, as the liturgy begins, all the lights in the church are turned off so that everyone sitting in the church, and it's usually a pretty full church because it's a big deal, important liturgy, all the lights are off and everybody's sitting in the dark. And then in the back of church, in the entryway, uh, Father, right now it'd be Father Eduardo, would light a little bonfire, actual open flame in the entryway of the church. Then he would bless that fire, making it holy fire. I don't know if there's anything cooler than holy fire, but it's so cool. So he makes it holy fire. Then he says very special prayers using this candle, which is brand new, never been lit before, right? The, tw the, the new candle, so this year would be the 2020 candle, he would say special prayers. And in those special prayers, he would reference the alpha, that Jesus is the beginning, that Jesus was there in the beginning as the second divine person. He was there at the creation of the universe, the alpha and the omega. Alpha and omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. So they represent the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, that he is everything for our faith. Then with other prayers, there are prayers that go with each number in the year. With each number in the year, a little prayer goes with that. And then finally, these points, these red points, these are actually pins that the priest pushes into the candle while saying the prayers. And the prayers correspond Two, these pins correspond to the wounds that Jesus received on the cross. So you can see the crown of thorns. He is crucified by, through his hands and one through his feet. And then, of course, the lance in his side. So these correspond to the wounds of Christ. And then after the priest says these prayers, blessing this candle so that this candle becomes a holy candle, a, a conduit for God's grace for the rest of the year, it is then lit from that holy fire, from that blessed fire. Then from the one paschal candle, all other candles in the church are lit. And I forgot to mention a minute ago that all those people in the pews who are sitting in the dark are holding a candle. You get a candle when you come to the Easter Vigil to hold. And then what happens is, from the one flame of the Paschal candle, blessed with the wounds of Christ, that flame is shared throughout the entire church. And what happens is the deacon will actually hold this candle. Deacons have to be strong, obviously, right? The deacon will hold the candle and will process up the center aisle of the church, stopping three times to sing, uh, Christ is our light. Christ is our light, right? Or maybe, no, maybe it's this is the light of Christ. This is the light of Christ. Might be that one. I don't remember exactly, but it's, he sings three times about the light of Christ before it is finally put in its stand up in the sanctuary. Now, I mentioned that everyone in the church has a candle, there is one exception to that. Well, two if you count babies. We don't give candles to babies. But the other exception to that is the adults who are not yet baptized, who are going to be baptized in that font over there. During the Easter Vigil, those unbaptized adults, they don't get a candle. Why is that? Because we receive the light of Christ in our baptism. It's when we are baptized that we get the light of Christ. So 
the service of light and this Paschal candle is a beautiful symbol of the idea that Jesus, that we receive in baptism, when we are born again in water and fire, in the fire of the Holy Spirit, when we receive the sacrament of baptism, that is when we are made to be a light to the world, to share Jesus' light to everyone. So what happens is, the whole church is lit by candlelight as each one of us sits holding up our light of Christ. And it is beautiful because despite the fact that all the powerful LEDs that are in the ceiling are turned off, the church is perfectly lit so that everyone can see everyone. A candle in a dark space provides a lot of light. And the light of Christ provides a lot of light in a dark world. And right now, some of us might feel like our world is a little bit dark. We need to cling to Christ, to the light of Christ, to his resurrection in Easter to help us remember that there is light in darkness. Because then what happens in the vigil is, after an extended liturgy of the word in which we hear story after story from the Old Testament. We hear about creation in Genesis and we hear about Moses in the Exodus. We hear from the prophets and the words that they spoke that obviously refer to Jesus Christ. And then finally we hear the gospel in which we re the empty tomb is revealed and we celebrate. And what happens is when we read the gospel, bells are rung and the lights are turned on and all of the candles all around the sanctuary are all lit because we celebrate that Jesus is alive. After that, we celebrate the initiation of our brothers and sisters into Christ. And those who didn't have a candle at the beginning of the liturgy are baptized and part of the rite of baptism is they receive their candle. And that candle is lit from this Paschal candle. And then guess what? Every month for the rest of the year, when we gather on a Saturday late every month and we invite babies to be baptized from families of St. Andrews, guess what? Those babies are symbolically presented with a lit candle, lit from this candle. Easter is so beautiful and our symbolism and our rituals and the things that we use are so meaningful because of the richness and the depth of how we connect with the truths that we believe. So I hope that gives you, I hope that's interesting, <laughs> number one. And number two, I hope it gives you something to think about. I'm gonna leave you with this and then ask you to have a conversation with your adult. How can you, in these times that sometimes feel dark, how can you be a light to the world? How can you bring the light of Christ that you have within you, thanks to your baptism and your sacraments, how can you be a light to the world? Talk about that for a few minutes with your adult. And don't keep it theoretical, make it real. What can you do this week? What concrete thing could you do? At least once, if not twice or three or four times, what could you do to bring the light of Christ, the light of God, the joy of the resurrection in this Easter season, to the world.